an organization of residents of Princeton Borough and Township with diverse backgrounds, interests, and talents. Princeton Future has grown out of a concern that much of the planning and proposed development of the critical downtown spaces have been proceeding in an unconnected manner. The aim of Princeton Future is to assist the municipal authority to take a forward-looking and more comprehensive approach. Investigation and consultation undertaken by Princeton Future indicates that these objectives are achievable with good planning. More detailed studies and further involvement of all concerned parties are, however, clearly called for. I think we're going to get started. Everyone can take a seat. We reviewed the hospital properties parameters that were developed from comments since November, our beginning of the project, um, and brought together uh, through a, a review of those comments um, by the advisory committee. Um, the advisory committee now has met approximately three or four times. Uh, the last meeting was after the March uh, 5th meeting where Many of you have comments, and those uh, revisions were made uh, and placed on the website. Um, there were two um, letters to the editor that appeared in the town topic of the packet that uh, introduced the Witherspoon Street Corridor Study set of parameters for the hospital properties and directed people to the website. What we asked people to do was also use what is on the page, home page of the website, the contact us. And if they had any comments um, of any type, to use that, that format freely. What we are um, finding, and that's something I'm going to share with you right now, is that. Um, had beginning in March where the primary content was was uh, established and placed on the site for the project that we had 1,676 hits by mostly people in this community um, but certainly um, those who read the papers came to the meetings have been following the process uh, in terms of meetings being aired on TV 30. And we're finding that with March, um, with an average of 54 hits per day, um, we're seeing April hits going up to about 59 per day. So we're already at the mid middle of the month for uh, April at over 900 hits. Um, the other data that you might see here that goes to the right um, talks about how many pages we can see uh, other than just the home page which was the area where the parameters were actually displayed we have links and so we know exactly what people are, are looking at and reading um, for every document and page on the site uh, and this is what this shows you unfortunately I can't change that right color uh, color, column, color format, um, it, it's defaulting to a, a URL mode, but um, it breaks out the hits and how people are going to different uh, pages. Then there's also, I mean, there's, there's a lot of data, but there's very interesting set of data about uh, usage by country. Um, the interesting thing we have about 10 so people who have uh, perused this from places such as you know, Brazil, Poland, and Mexico. But primarily, the network means you know, the open network is a commercial, certainly, segment of that, those was commercially. Unresolved, unknown, and I guess indistinguishable. indistinguishable. And uh, US educational, which would be the EDU, like Princeton or other schools that might is the site. So Pam or Karen is here. We know exactly when you're looking on. Do you know how many unique kits you get? Or just all of them? 
It's aggregate. It's aggregate at this point. Okay. Um, that's the end of that. Right. Today, we're going to continue on in this mode. Now that you have a little bit of the data. Um, we're in our last advisory committee meeting. Uh, we went from looking at the parameters, which uh, in its revision, the revised form since the, May, the March 5th meeting, um, it was suggested that uh, two major issues be, be addressed. And if possible, there certainly will be uh, by uh, May, our final presentation. And um, the first one was more editorial in terms of the, the syntax and whether the recommendations are sounding um, as though they are demands or a must uh, do something or should. So we're looking at some of uh, those uh, uh, words. Then uh, with regard to the nature of some of the suggestions with regard to the, um, the taxation element. Um, we're having, and we've had at least volunteered uh, to us from Pam Hirsch, um, their attorneys providing information, universities attorneys providing information about what uh, the work that they have done has resulted in in terms of their understanding of zoning, uh, ability to influence and uh, actually mandate uh, the mode of taxation. So we're thankful for that volunteerism. Um, what we're also uh, looking at, and we looked at that advisory uh, meeting, is that there is a subcommittee of planners and designers that is also the meeting. That subcommittee comes out of the advisory committee. Um, it includes certainly the team, um, Michael Mosteller, Holly Nelson, and Kevin Wilkes, and Shirley Satterfield, and myself, but volunteers that include Alan Goodhart, uh, Joan Kendig, uh, John Galvin, I think he's there, yes, he's there today, um, who have come together on several subsequent meetings, uh, provided additional design advice and expertise to uh, provide inputs on what we're going to look at today. Now, what we're going to look at today are hospital um, physical options. We've talked about sort of the policy. We're going to use what was established in early on, uh, a modification of sort of the approach. We had a strategic approach, and it, it's still valid, it's just that it is shaken out a little differently, and, and both uh, Michael Mosteller will tell you more about that. And that was the, sort of the five ways of looking at how the site either uh, was developed with existing buildings down to, to a full teardown, and you know, ver and, uh, variations in between. Uh, but that still is consideration, but it's not categorized exactly in that manner. You know, and Michael will explain more. Also, um, Michael and Joanna Kendek worked quite a bit on the um, <laughs> site design. Um, you'll be looking the second half of the meeting at the Michigan Street Corridor suggestions by our landscape uh, planning group of, uh, led by Kevin, um, who looked at the entire street, how it's, it should be laid out. Of course, using all the comments that come from the neighborhood, uh, his uh, community meeting. So, that said, uh, and I'll come back on in the interim period. Michael is going to get started. He's going to use boards, so I'm going to uh, close this out. Can we turn off the screen? Thank 
Pam, see you come down. Hello, oh, sir. Thank you. Our, our committee <coughs> tried to generate images of, uh, that I think design proceeds in the two directions. Uh, one from the parameters that we had described in terms of the, the five uh, possibilities and then the, I think it ends up being 14 uh, criteria or parameters. And then there is in fact a physical site uh, that has streets around it, has buildings surrounding it, has an orientation, has a north and south. Uh, that, that design is, is at the beginning is a series of hypotheses about what an eventual solution is going to be. So that I want you to consider these as possibilities, as questions being asked in, in, in terms of what a layout might look like that tests the possibilities of the site and the criteria at the same time. And the design is the vehicle that you use as a step in the towards the final uh, uh, plan, layout, decision, uh, community strategy that actually would be developed in a larger conversation. And we hope that these designs could help contribute to that larger conversation. There are many decisions that have to be made. Uh, much of what we would present would not expect to be implemented in any of the exact ways in which we've shown any one particular scheme. So that this is to provide food for thought uh, and to begin to have you see what the limits, dimensions, possibilities, and images of what might, what we might be making decisions about later. Uh, so let me walk you through these uh, with that in mind. And of course, uh, discussion today is, is very important to us. Uh, we are going to come back in approximately a month, and we can refine these, add to these, and make suggestions about these for that presentation. <coughs> we are, uh, in all of the views, exactly in the same spot, uh, hovering over Community Park, looking down, over essentially over Community Park School, looking down on the site, towards in the distance, this would be downtown in this direction, the Township Hall would be roughly where I'm standing. <coughs> and this is Henry Street, Henry Street, this is the existing hospital <coughs> here. This is Henry Street, this is Carnahan, Witherspoon, First, Lee, Clay, Franklin, and these are the houses that exist on Harris Street, and we have kept those houses in every scheme. So you can see at the top of every, uh, we're at, uh, well, turned out to be uh, an, uh, not an exact rectangle. It is a rectangle, of course, in real life, and plan. Those are the houses that exist uh, on Harris. There we go, thank you. <laughs> Behind the hospital. These are the medical office buildings. This is the garage. Uh, this is the hospital complex per se, and this is the tall building here. So that is the existing. Now, it is possible that one of the options that I think should always be explored. Uh, and our committee agrees with is that one of the options costed would be what would it, what would happen if we actually kept those buildings exactly all of them exactly as they are um, because we know there's going to be a cost involved if we actually start demolishing them so there's going to come a point where in fact the benefit of reuse of any one particular structure is going to have an economic meaning in terms of the return we can get for what we can put in. That is a, a relatively complicated assessment that I think is going to have to be ongoing and continuing as we proceed. Uh, so what we have done is in certain of these schemes, shown certain buildings staying in some schemes and not in others, but that doesn't mean that that would be the only way in which we could keep any of the buildings. <coughs> One solution then, if it were in fact cost effective in any way, and would provide some of the goals that I think we're hearing in the community, both in this room that we heard uh, on Wednesday night, and that is coming out in other discussions, 
that this is a very valuable site for residential development. And the other night at the PCH meeting in the same room, it was for a very diverse, uh, varied in terms of building type, build apartment type, uh, ages of people living there, cost of apartments, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is <coughs> investigated in relationship to that. Now, of course, you don't get it free. I mean, I hear around the community a little bit, well, it's going to cost a million dollars to tear that down. Well, it's not, you're not going to move people into apartments when the hospital goes out the door. I mean, there's going to be an enormous cost in terms of renovating and installing residential facilities in any of those buildings. So because you don't tear the buildings down, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have actually saved money. Okay, let's walk through the schemes, uh, and they each have their pluses and minuses. They are essentially in two large categories the townhouse block, which is a more unitary development, and there are three of those, one, two, three, which I'll show you in a minute. And then, uh, I forgot to put urban village on this one, but this is an urban village example too. These are what I'm calling urban village uh, ideas. And as you'll see, you'll have to synthesize in your own mind as we go along some of the possible options that begin to emerge <coughs> as we as designers has to decide for solutions. So for example, in this particular scheme here, there are the houses in back. This is Henry with <coughs> Essentially, you will see in every scheme, there is a new street at least. Most often, that new street is a conti approximate continuation of Lee Street. Here, 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 here. And then in this particular one, there's also a street here. So that that idea is underlying all the schemes, that the block is too big, we don't want a super block, that we would introduce the mechanism of town life, which is the street, and access to whatever kind of residential accommodation occurs in each scheme off of those streets. So there are no super blocks uh, in any of the schemes. Uh, that are not accessed each house from an, an exterior street. <coughs> so in this one, this is the garage, and we have come up with an idea that repeats in, and, and could repeat in any scheme. You can see it in, in this one, this one, and this one, <coughs> that we, we could build an approximate two-story structure on top of the garage, and then on the side of the garage, exactly like this building right here. <coughs> we could put apartments that would then face onto a front yard and a street. So we've used that example right there as an idea. That this is the actual face of the garage, just as there's a garage behind that apartment building. So we would do that, and on top would be a courtyard for that group. Uh, in this particular scheme, we are suggesting that it might be possible to reutilize these buildings, and even that one, uh, if it's possible that the continued use in our community of this set of, of spaces for medical offices can be sustained. I mean, that, that access to that medical office outpatient uh, usage is very <coughs> important to all of us, having had, since our last meeting, two visits to those buildings of my family, myself, and we're all using those. So that is always a consideration. In any of the schemes as we go forward, those buildings could stay. Um, in, in this particular scheme, and some of this we were developing in parallel with our space landscape group, uh, and it's probable that we would now go back and not make such a big open space. That was one of our parameters. But you'll see in the second presentation that there is an, a, a concept that in general, except for this one, all the other schemes would abide with, which is a more linear open space in, in front of what is now the hospital in all of the schemes. So except for this one here, and this one over here, and this where we keep the hospital building, uh, that uh, opposite the Clay Street Learning Center, and some sort of space could go here, but we would always utilize what you'll see later as a linear park down the street. 
Uh, then, the key idea of these three schemes is a unitary development of townhomes or townhouses that have an inner access to parking for that set of units. Uh, so that all the houses, and they can be two and three stories, and they could be multiple uses and occupancies. In other words, the form does not preclude a variety of types of occupations inside. Uh, and, uh, and along this area, we could put uh, on, on the ground level, uh, or even at this corner, uh, it could be our standard Witherspoon mix of commercial and residential. So that's very possible in this scheme. Expected very much in this scheme and this scheme that we would utilize the character of Witherspoon as it exists of mixed use, uh, first floor and upper floors, um, uh, mixing different kinds of commercial and residential uses. So here you see that, that block. So this scheme has seniors' apartments, keeping the medical office building, an idea that there could be an open space here, and then that unitary block of town houses. In this, in this second scheme, it is turned the other way, and this is the scheme that most, uh, in terms of scale, uh, reflects the scale of Harris Street, because we flip the scale and have single family homes on a new street, uh, which is running this way, and then our unitary row house or townhouse block, town home block, is, is facing the other direction with the possibility of three-story buildings uh, on Witherspoon Street itself, uh, and again with potential mixed use on the first floor. This is a variation on that in which we, we build at higher density all through the site, so you can see it's very similar to this scheme, only we don't rebuild the single family homes, uh, which are extremely low density. I think our conclusion is that uh, the way to affordability and the way to diversity is through uh, a, a density that allows us to include different kinds of units and a number that allows us to significantly impact the affordability issue. Michael, do you have a sense of what that number is? Well, we're going to talk about that. Um, 20 and up. 20 per year. It's my, it's, it's my suspected. What's the existing units per acre in John Witherspoon? The John Witherspoon neighborhood, we estimate, is about 22. Although the zoning is around 10 um, right. or 12. We're going to show you a slide. So uh, these are about 15. This one is about 10 units per acre, 15. This is about, well, this, this one, depending on how many units, at what scale we put here, this one is, I think, do you have the numbers on that? Uh, that had 150, 50. So that's? 50 for the apartments and 50 for the townhouses. So that's about 10 units per acre. Uh, in these, let's go to these now, uh, this takes a little bit different approach uh, that uh, this scheme includes, for example, number six, includes a half block back here, which is essentially the same as this. So you can see you could use this in, in the urban village so that you would have a mix here of the townhouse block. Over here is a row house row. We used the senior's apartment on top here, and then we came up with the idea in midstream, after we had done that, that we could use in certain configurations on this block, uh, we could have a community uh, uh, center, not only for the hall block, but potentially for the seniors there. Uh, I'll continue with this scheme, that here where the hospital is high now, we could build an apartment building uh, which would be in a, a garden apartment with an elevator type building, which is shown here and here. So these are garden apartments. Garden apartments are, are those kind of apartments where you walk in, there's a stair, there's an apartment here, an apartment there, apartment here, apartment there, and you go up the stair, 
and it repeats. Uh, these are uh, scale, these are apartment houses, I call them, house apartments, that are scaled like the ones over here. And will someone pronounce Van Dievender for me? <laughs> I use the old Dutch Van Deventer pronunciation. Uh, that these are that scale. <clears throat> and they look like houses, but in fact they have apartments in them. So there's that type of unit. So we have garden apartments, a seniors' apartments complex, an apartment building, garden apartment, garden apartment, and, and townhouses all together. So you can see, in a sense, that's where the urban village idea emerged. Up here we have a little, and there's a street down the middle and around the side. It's possible, depending on how exact limits are that we could go through there, but I'm not sure of that now. Now in this one, of course, you could do the same thing in this one with the garage. This just shows the garage as it is. Uh, and we have a row of the uh, Van Dievener apartments on here. Garden apartment, garden apartment, Van Dievener, garden apartment, row houses or townhouses, Van Dievener types, and then either row houses or townhouses or garden apartments here. This shows the possibility that as this discussion continues, that we could consider uh, replacing the existing uh, Franklin Street public housing uh, project with two and three story buildings. Those buildings were built in 1938. They're going to need work. Uh, we don't want them to be lost in any way. And if, any, if, if, if replacing them with this would mean that, we don't want to do that. But it's also possible as we move forward that there should be a plan for the upgrading in some manner of that uh, uh, important community resource. Uh, uh, now, this one shows the possibility, for example, of keeping the existing tall hospital building, surrounding it with, uh, and, and putting a street through. You can see why design is a hypothesis. Probably we could get one apartment type uh, house-like building here next to that, which brings down the scale. Continue that down the street. Uh, this could be either townhouses or another one of those apartments. Here's our seniors' apartments. Garden apartments on this new street. We could have either townhouses or apartment houses here. These are garden apartments in this scheme. And it's possible now, you see, we have a whole block that could be actually a facility, even a CCRC, that would not be the whole site, but would be half the site utilizing that for that purpose. So these could be apartments. This could be an entity, actually. This could be a development proposal in which you would keep that building, but then you would build smaller buildings around it, as many assisted living facilities now provide. So that uh, the idea that emerges here is the possibility of utilizing this uh, in a way uh, for uh, either a apartments, which could be laws, or s a some sort of CCRC model. And these buildings could be either parceled off or part of that. So, the, so you can see the site through this design exploration begins to tell us things that we now know. That if we always think about dividing it up at least in two, uh, if we always think that it's possible that some of the buildings could remain, uh, but we're not sure exactly which ones are the right ones to do yet, because that's a, that really has to be costed out. Um, we see that by introducing a mix of unit types, we can attract our mix of people that we're interested in. If we construct financing mechanisms that allow that to occur, then we would be allowing for the diversity of incomes that we are speaking of in terms of our <coughs> affordability goals. And our goals, I think, as, as an inter integrated, diverse social community, which is so important to us. Uh, the garage offers this possibility, which is one that I think, now that we can see that it can be done, and there's an example right here, that it's not as far-fetched as we might have thought 10 years ago. Uh, but there are still, of course, technical issues that need to be investigated. <coughs> so in summary, I would say that e every scheme depends upon 
a parcelization of the site in some manner, each one a little different. For example, this could be a parcel, that's a parcel, that's a parcel. Uh, and this one lends itself in a different way to that idea. Each of them tries to integrate it back into the community by connecting to the speed system. Uh, this one uh, introduces the idea that if the goal would be to create a community like Queenstown, Queenstown, Queenstown huh, which is a unitary development where actually all the siding is the same, all the paint is the same, all the window heads are the same, all the details are the same, but it's still very nice, this would be that direction. This is the one where urbanistically it, it, can, it starts with the idea of an urban village in which there is, and I say a village is an entity that is made up of a whole bunch of different things. Uh, and at a certain point it becomes a town which is made up of a whole bunch and more of each one of those things. But, so this is the diverse model, this is the unitary model. They each have their own value. Uh, so, uh, well, that's other stuff there. Yes, I mean. Is, is um, scheme number seven the only scheme that um, considers the housing authority apartments? No, uh, I, I would say I just showed this to show that given that site, it would be possible to redesign that site in terms of goals to be formulated, uh, probably on, on behalf of Haybach, that would, uh, that would generate increased housing. And, uh, and I, know these, I know this is not a final, this is right. just conversational or discussional, but uh, the other schemes, though, do not consider. Uh, they, this they could float into any scheme. So I just showed it once. Uh, gotcha. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of sort of concerned about saying anything because I'm absolutely amazed. I've been here for most of these meetings, and I'm not seeing three quarters of the discussions that have gone on in any of these schemes. High, tall urban development from the neighborhoods is not what I heard. Five-story, three-story, brick-story buildings in the Witherspoon area is not what I heard. Well, these buildings are three-story. Bu garage is five. If you put those apartments on top of that garage, then you've got, <coughs> this garage is already three stories. I don't know where I missed it, but this um, is not what I heard. These are two and three. I think what, well, the option is, which we did not show, the one you would like would be this one. Well, I can't say, Michael, that I like any of them, but yeah, I mean. Would you, but would you like the Harris Road houses all over the site? No, I don't okay. want the Harris Road houses all over the site because I don't think that's effective. I think, though, that having a huge block, and that is a big block, I know, I walk it a lot, of nothing but apartments and townhouses <coughs> is counter to the entire area that we're trying to restore. So what would you suggest? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I was leaving it up to the experts, but having huge buildings in, uh, encompassing that entire block Why is you not what I... Why are buildings huge? Three-story, many of the houses, <laughs> and, and you look, not only in the this elevation. This one shows higher and rises higher. higher. This one keeps it. This one is in the inside of a block. We have tried to up the density and reduce the impact. In every case, you'll see that the exterior, except for right here, and we don't have to accept that. That was an explanation. But it's high there now if we keep it. Uh, the entire surrounding in relation to the neighborhood has been attempted to keep the scale low. And that's, that is the expert's answer. I mean, that was certainly one of the things expressed around concerns about height. What um, we're looking at in the strategic approach is that if you tear down everything, there is the lowest density possible either to do nothing and have a park 
or to have the density that might simulate the density of uh, the Harris Road block up to something that is a higher density. So it's a, these show ranges. Um, perhaps that scheme that, uh, that uh, Michael just described as a repeat of a single family detached house throughout the block hasn't, hasn't been illustrated. But it's certainly one that we talked about in our first um, or second <laughs> workshop. And Michael mentioned that it also has to be costed out. And I think we found that from a tax uh, perspective, um, in terms of the borough gaining property taxes, that would be the least uh, revenue generating type of development. But there are other categories, uh, well, other cra criteria as well. We could build, exactly. We could build 10 to 20 McMansions on the side. That's not, that's, I mean, that is absolutely, and, and if you had presented that, I would have been stupefied too, because that was absolutely not, I mean, mixed use housing, reasonable density, low, low profiles is what I think what I heard from all the workshops. Um, some stores, some single family homes, some townhouses, but not five story buildings, not something that replicates this thing. Well, I was only using that to point to the fact that you could build a facility. I mean, this is gorgeous in this no, area. I, I wouldn't want to transport this down. No, with that's not exactly what I meant. I meant that you could do a building next to a building. Oh. multiple scenario because I think when it comes down to the reality of what's going to happen to the site, anybody who's going to spend money on it is going to want to make as much and as big as they can. And what we need to do is, is get everybody to see what that might look like. And hopefully what we're doing is a more palatable version of big. And if it still isn't what the community wants, then at least they know they've seen what it looks like from coming to the meetings, and we know what, what we don't want. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Gail Johnson. I live on Lee Avenue. I have a question about the uh, extension of Lee Avenue. Do you see that as a uh, two-way street? Oh, you know, I don't know that I wouldn't want to predict what the right answer is to that. We've discussed both ways, Gail. I, I think we'd like it to be a two-way street, but we realize that it introduces a little strangeness at the intersection of Witherspoon. So we're a little nervous about that. So it, it Would you see Lee Avenue, the rest of Lee Avenue, becoming a two-way street also? We hadn't no. thought about that at all. I would doubt it. It's too narrow. It's too narrow, yeah. Uh, I think we're not that detailed yet to know the right answer to that. I mean, our goal would be to keep the traffic on this new street at a minimum. I mean, we don't want... And regardless, it only extends one block and will then end at a T at the end of that. So we don't want to channel a lot of traffic that way. But it kind of makes sense that people in there could turn and come out and get to Witherspoon and turn right or left and go. I have a secondary question. Those gray spots and gray blocks in two and three, is that parking? That is parking. Yes. So that's asphalt. asphalt. That is asphalt. And, and that, that would, uh, there would actually, there are standards where you have to have bump outs with trees in them and so on, which I did not draw everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. About the storm drain. Uh, the storm drain, <laughs> in, in which scheme? <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, I don't understand. This is my first meeting. I don't understand why there's a need to increase the density of this area. It's already getting crowded for the streets and whatnot. And I agree with the lady behind me about the this. Density. Every scheme lowers the density. There's 4,000 people a day on that site. Mm -hmm. Well, we have now many homes. Uh, well, we have now many homes where there's single homes, windows, and four sides. And here, with row houses, tenements, and whatnot, I envision this being the beginnings of a slum development. Maybe it's 50, 100 years from now. Or if you drive through slums or whatnot, I think a lot of them look like this. I don't see this being any improvement whatsoever. 
Uh, concern with your, uh, we go to that 20 units per acre, which I know is still what the Witherspoon area is. <clears throat> it's going to have that overcrowding where we don't have more green. Because if you ever go to Community Park, to their parks at night during the summer, especially the playground, and where they have, you have presently, the lands can buy by that this, but you may have 150, 200 people out there now. I think we've got to keep it to that 10 <coughs> units per acre is the feedback. Try to get some green area, play area like you've done. And the thing with the, uh, that's very important. But I see it's a real mix. I think will probably happen. I like your concept, how you said it really got four development areas. Got where one, the garage, you got maybe the medical offices where that is. Let's put that into four different areas. I think in the long term, we're going to have something of this nature occur on this. You know, it's all schematic at this stage, ideas. You know, if, and it's all economics. To use the hospital in its present structure does make economic sense to convert that into apartments. And these things are, you know, it's it's not cheap. You know, I think the university did their study, and they just felt not, if they took over. Well, that's what I was trying to indicate that that, that I've, I've been having discussions around town, and one of the options is always put forward well. It would be so expensive to tear them down, but that's not necessarily an actual economic investigation right. for you. Being in somewhat in the, uh, being in commercial real estate, the rule of thumb is eight to ten dollars square foot to knock down the entire structure and bring it down, and that's taking everything off the site <coughs> and literally leveling it. That's a uh, rule of thumb, and. Uh, you know, that's, that's a real cost. And what the hospital needs, they need some real cash to relocate. That, you know, they're looking for the highest price, then you add that on top. You know, you have gotta be very, I think, safeguarded about, I think, what you, scheme number three, which was 20 per acre, you gotta be very careful with that. 20 that, units that, per acre. That, that's not 20. This was 20. Uh, these are 20. Okay, you're excused. But we got to be very safe for it. But you know, it is a, uh, the urban will be an extension of basically downtown. I want to get that feel what, up. What, yeah, let me just see if I can phrase my thoughts about that after the questions. Uh, I, I would say in a way that if we took these three schemes, which are approximately 20, uh, they could go up or down, right? I mean, we, we could build some of these, not as apartment buildings, but as, as could be medical office. Me the medical office building could be here. I mean, these could be made to houses. These could be houses. Uh, I mean, it's, we have introduced every building type into the whole system. See what I'm saying? Here are single family homes. Here are town homes. Here are the uh, uh, Van Dievener type buildings. This is a garden apartment building, of which we have many in, in town, right? So the vocabulary is really drawn from the town. The density is going to be a discussion between the people who wanted to go down and the people who wanted to go up. Uh, and we're going to reach some sort of compromise around, I, I presume in the end, between the amount of money that's required to actually uh, go forward on the site with any development whatsoever. Uh, uh, and that's going to mean multifamily residences, we believe. We put forward a series of options of those multifamily residences, a series of options of putting uh, streets in, a series of options of keeping the building. They are then like, it's a game of chess now. We have the pieces, we have the board, and we're going to play it out in relation to a set of values that still is ongoing. So, although I may have been a little sharp with the, you know, I don't think it's going to go below 15. So 
because I don't think anything is going to be affordable by anybody to develop this site, which is already at an extremely high density now. Uh, I mean, uh, anything we do is going to significantly lower the density. Uh, it's going to put a community in the middle uh, of, of five minutes in all directions to every convenience that you need. So in fact, even though there is a garage here, these are the people that aren't going to need to drive very much either. So they're, it's a very walkable site. So uh, on many reasons, the, the issue of actually trying to look for compatible ways to have more people living here benefits us in other ways. Uh, it benefits us from the standpoint of affordability. It benefits it from the standpoint that these are not going to be built out in the township where everybody will have to drive to get to where they go. So we will be actually reducing, by building more units here, reducing the impact of traffic everywhere. Uh, we will be reducing the impact for providing these people with housing, but they won't need their cars. So there is a really multiple impact at, of the advantages of an of appropriately, uh, but not outrageous, high density. Um, that's the argument. Size of the unit, would you say 20 per acre or something? How big is the unit? Uh, they can vary anywhere from, I would say, 1,000 square feet to 1,500 to 2,000. Do you want me to go through that? Mike, we have to. Can I just get one in that's related yeah. to this first? Sure. Okay. Uh, my name is Owen Leach. Uh, my property is 293, 295 Witherspoon. Uh, first of all, everything you've shown up there, I think, is an improvement over what's there now. And uh, we'll ah, get, we're going, we're getting better, does. not worse, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. My question is this: Have you calculated which of these plans feeds the beast more well, that, that's than what the others? I was going to address. Meaning that's the tax it. revenue is that well, what you're going to address? Because I'm talking the beast, in my opinion, is Prince <laughs> Township, and the politicians will make us do whatever pays them the most. Right, you're and right. So I'm wondering which of these pays them the most. Well, and that's an interesting point about township versus borough. We haven't drawn that line as to which um, units fall within, but that, that can be done. <clears throat> Game two, it's actually the lowest density. And I want to be clear that density are the number of units per acre. That's different from overcrowding, which is a per unit condition. Okay, that's how many people live in a uh, unit or apartment or house. Now, game two, Michael, can you show us this game two? It's up there, okay. It has 60 townhouses, 12 single uh, family detached as the gentleman said, windows in all four sides. And there are 72 units that come up that. Um, when the unit per site uh, ratio is very low, that will put extra pressure on each unit to pay a certain property tax and as well as uh, obtain a very high value in terms of a purchase price in the interest of the property owner. The next scheme in looking at uh, density is scheme one, which had uh, 50 apartments and 50 townhouses, and that was approximately 100. The next in uh, density order, I'm sorry, there is no scheme four, I think, there's one of the schemes are missing, right? Yeah. We had an old numbering system here. <laughs> but you didn't Five we've altered, so it's actually uh, more like six and seven. It's more like six and seven. Okay. All right. Well, that is confusing, but let's look at what was to be scheme four. Had 70 apartments, uh, 44 townhouses, and it generated 114 units. Scheme three, 40 apartments, 88 townhouses, and it's 128 units. 
then the range of schemes from five, six, seven, who are now more similar than not, um, are between 158 and 177 units uh, for the site. And of course, how they break out, not only the division between township and borough, but as parcels um, for development will greatly impact um, what the um, developer interest, the developer's ability to uh, um, return a profit, and which will always then influence the price of the land. Um, there are also other data that this goes into whether the garage is there or not. In many cases, the garage as a uh, leftover of our site um, provides excess parking. I believe that's what, because we have, there are over 700, uh, 700 space, almost 750. And um, that, it seems parking is a great asset in Princeton for whatever reason. Down that location, it may not be uh, as prime, but it certainly is a resource that we would also want to consider, not only to the site's development, the total site's development, perhaps in this case, but also um, for the community. Um, retail spaces are, um, are opportunities. We haven't gotten into the discussion of zoning today because we talked a lot about that in, in two prior meetings. But the desire for a similar um, zoning in that area for um, Witherspoon Street would be similar to the RB in the borough where it is primarily a unit with an a opportunity to have 60, it required 60% residential, but an opportunity to include 40% commercial. Um, depending on how units or how sites are developed within this block, how uh, parcels are divided, that could impact what um, and how that plays out. For example, there had been um, quite a bit of uh, dis interest in recreating in Palmer Square where you'd end up having all of the buildings with first floors having uh, a continuous building of commercial or even uh, detached buildings in order to keep the primarily uh, residential feel that we have to look further at how those parcels on Witherspoon Street would, would uh, develop. The Henry Avenue, Franklin, uh, Terrace and the um, back of Harris Road, those houses are and that as a perimeter or primarily residential uh, bearing uh, densities as was noted. Um, each of the schemes um, have uh, different kinds of approaches. Um, if they're single family um, Primarily, they did not include the com uh, community um, uh, building as a type, not to say that there wouldn't be landscaped uh, open uh, public areas within the site, but certainly not as a center or a building. Um, but three of the schemes allow for that as a potential. As Michael pointed out, one was the senior building, and then in six and seven, there are opportunities uh, in other areas of the site. Um, I think that's, and I don't know if you have, you can see their averages of unit size, you know, from 2,000 to 2,500. This is all becomes quite dependent on what's marketable, how, what household types are being um, served, um, and then, of course, the unit types that they're uh, situated within. But um, the design and the site allows for these types of, uh, of scale. Any more questions about this particular aspect? Yeah, so, yes. so would scheme three be the one that's going to generate the most revenue for the, uh, the governmental entities because it has considerably more of the 2,000 foot townhouses or, or, or has an estimate been made, is my, I'm asking? Well, which, not which one necessarily. Um, 128 is the lowest 
is, is a lower density than, let's say, 177. I understand, but the it's, value of the 2,000 square right. foot. It depends on what these units actually are. I mean, you can, in CCRCs, pay quite a bit of per unit rent that well exceeds the market for a normal apartment, but that doesn't necessarily, you know, how that figures into the, um, the revenue stream is going to be an interesting thing in terms of both taxation and the, the value of the property. There, the price of, of these single family houses that are 2,500 square feet on the lowest uh, density set would have to sell for quite a bit if the, the, um, the revenues, um, the sale of the land are the primary interest being served. The apartment lower scale in terms of unit size at a thousand square feet um, could be any rent if they're, you know, as open market. What determines the rent is what the market will bear. So how you um, envision their occupancy in terms of the diversity that's been sought through both type and uh, access is what will also factor in. So there's no way to say which one absolutely, but if you're holding true to um, the basic principles, and, and that was to have various unit types and diversity of options um, for living at the site, then you'll find that you'll have to probably have more than town, a townhouse and a single family detached house not only on the numbers, but on the, on the types of units. So I guess that was a long way around saying the jury's still out in terms of that kind of determination. We, you know, we hope we'll have uh, someone to be able to look at that between now and May. Okay. Yes? Can I just say that um, as a public official, um, I'm, I'm, not only, I'm not only interested. Thank you. Well, as a public official, I'm not only uh, interested in uh, how much property taxes and how much money that the site is going to there for the, the government entity. I'm looking at, at, at the overall picture. So um, I'd like to say that this is a, what I'm looking at is, is, is beautiful. Um, personally, I'd like to see mix, mixed use, um, basically. Um, and I think that we're going probably the right direction. But um, as a government official in Princeton Township, uh, we're not the beast. And I uh, just want to say that you know, we're, we're looking at the total picture. You know, we're going to work with everyone. Uh, that's Lance Liverman, who is a township committeeman and uh, resident of Middlesbrough Street. Okay. Um, 